Hey, Vlad here, devinsidey.com. Welcome to another video. In the previous couple of videos, we added a database and an HTTP API on top of our to-do app. However, we were constantly stumbling on rough edges related to error handling, especially the ones related to the to-do IDs. And so today we're going to start a very important conversation about it. Let's get right to it. <music> Now, before we begin, I want to say that in the previous video, we talked about the HTTP layer, and I said that there is still a little bit of parallel error handling left to do, and I kind of wish that I had done this in the previous video, but it was kind of getting too long. Now, even though this is a very, very small change, we're not going to make this change today. Uh, we're going to make this in the next video, actually. Instead, we will focus solely on our issues with the IDs, and as of right now, there are two of them. The first one is, why do I keep insisting on not hard coding something like a UUID or an integer? Why do I keep insisting to use something more abstract as a string? Right now it is a string, which is not ideal, and we're going to fix this by the end of this video, and it's going to turn out to be super, super useful a couple of videos from now. And the second issue is that why did I use an ADT for it to do instead, instead of, for example, um, going the rather typical route to use an option of string for the ID or an option of UUID uh, for the ID over here. Why did I go and create it in ADT with one form that has an ID and the other form that does not have the ID? And these are the things that we're going to ponder about today. We will begin by the idea uh, presented to me in an interesting article that a friend of mine shared with me called Parse Don't Validate, and the link is going to be down in the description. And the idea is quite simple. Instead of crucifying the return types of our functions with options and either's and f's, and thus validating our data, why don't we move this validation to the earliest step in this chain and parse the data instead into stronger types. So the plan for today is to run through a quick example, uh, similar to example from the article. And uh, so the first half of the video, we're going to spend just on this example. And then we're going to see how this relates to the IDs. And we're going to switch back to our Teclas final uh, to do app. And we're going to fix the issue with the IDs. So we're going to begin by creating an empty project. So I'm in my dev directory. And as of right now, I only have the Teclas final uh, app in there. So I'm going to do G8 then inside the Scala seed, which is one of my Jira templates. Plates. And by the way, I switched to um, WSL2 recently, and there's a video coming up about this uh, right after the series, actually. Uh, let's just call it uh, Playground. Let's do com dev inside you. Let's do dev inside you over here. Let's open it with Visual Studio Code like this. Let's make it full screen. All right, there we go. And um, as of right now, we're just going to use the dependency on cat's core. So let me go to the build, not now, real quick. Uh, library dependencies over here like that. All right, now you can import it. All right, uh, cool. So if we go to our main while it keeps importing, uh, so the example in the article is just, uh, you know, let's have a function called head. I'm gonna call it head one because we're gonna have many of them. It just takes in a list, a list of A, okay? list of A and returns an A, okay? And it's gonna do list.head. Now, we know by, by now that this is not an ideal implementation of this function because obviously it can throw an exception for an empty list. So let's go and do uh, print line uh, head one, list.empty. This one is going to throw an exception. In fact, um, you know what? Let's run with bloop today. Uh, B run uh, playground uh, watch. All right, as you can see, it throws an exception, so I'm gonna comment it out. Okay, so instead we're gonna do head one, list one like this, and this one returns the first element. Nothing super exciting so far. So what we're gonna do now shouldn't be surprising at all. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing as we have been doing uh, all along. We're going to quote unquote, improve the return type of this function. You know, we're gonna go to an option, then we're gonna go to an either, then we're gonna go to an F with an applicative error. This is basically just a recap. It should not be anything new. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna clone that for example, and I'm just gonna say had two A. Okay, same thing, you know, list of A comes in, but now an option comes out. Okay, this should not be surprising at all. Uh, list even has a, has a function like this. So now I can um, copy these guys, put them over here and switch this one to two. This one to a two, and there we go. Maybe I should also uh, use a list that is a bit longer. One, two, three, one, two, three. All right, there we go. So this is an option, okay? So the next one is going to be an either, right? So maybe, hmm, what should I do? Uh, I'm going to copy 
these ones, right? Copy these ones, uh, paste this one over here, okay? So let me actually save real quick. So this is gonna be three, 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 okay? So now this is going to be an either, uh, the errors are going to be just strings, okay? Uh, there are multiple ways to um, to uh, retrieve the either. Um, just for fun, we're gonna do this color util random next boolean, and we're gonna match it. And if it's true, then we're going to retrieve our, our either like this. We're gonna say either from option list, had option, and if it's empty, then we're gonna do had of empty list, okay? And the other one is going to be, and again, we're just doing this for fun. Uh, either, I'm just showing you the API a little bit, okay? Non-fatal, list that had, okay? And if it's gonna throw an exception, uh, we're just gonna map the left side, left map to get message, right? Because we want we want this, we want the string, we don't want the, um, the um, exception, okay? We need an import for two cats, so we're gonna do import, uh, cats, um, let's just do syntax, syntax. Okay, it should be enough. All right, so there we go. Okay, before we had an options, options, now we have an either, not a big deal. The next thing that we're gonna do is the thing that we have been learning all along, you know, the whole uh, tagless final thing where the interpreter can decide what it is going to do. Okay, so this is going to be, let me create a bit more space. So this one is going to be had four and we're gonna go and gonna import cats because we're gonna need applicative error. Okay, so, um, all right, so A comes in, um, uh, we're also going to have an F, okay, right, because that's, you know, the whole tagless final thing, and we're going to say, hey, uh, we also need an applicative error for some type that has a hole. Uh, by the way, I'm going to start using slot. I would like to coin the term slot. I think slot is better than, than hole, okay, and the errors are going to be strings, okay, and so now over here, we don't need to return either string or A, we can just return an F of A, you know, classical tagless final. Okay, so over here, instead of this, we're going to say f dot from option. Really, this is the only difference, right? So, in fact, over here, we can pretty much just do this. In fact, f actually has a catch non-fatal as well. However, it would only work if your uh, applicative error returns a throwable over here. Okay, uh, because we need to to map this to get message, we, we cannot we cannot do it like this. However, we can also do f dot from either. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Okay, so over here it's going to be an f, but over here it's going to be f dot from either. And the whole thing is going to be inside, okay? Just like this. Uh, this is all we need. Um, it could not find implicative. Okay, so now I also need the instances, so I might as well just import the implicits. Implicits like this. By the way, I'm not planning to make a dedicated video about applicative error, uh, but I highly encourage you to jump in there and look at a couple of um, of things in there. By the way, so there's there's monad error and there's applicative error, but monad error basically just uh, extends applicative error and also extends the monad. So uh, applicative error is the one that um, that has the interesting API. It has a bunch of like helper methods. So for example, if you were to jump into from from either, you would see that all it is doing. I'm going to comment this out. All it is doing is basically folding on the either, right? And then on the left, you know, it's just going to raise error. And on the right, it's just going to convert into a pure, right? So this is exactly the same code. It's just that it's it's hidden in, in this helper, okay? Let me actually revert that real quick. Let's jump in there. Okay, like this. Okay, they're actually using a pattern match, but a pattern match is the same thing as a fold, uh, which is, by the way, the topic of the of the upcoming video. And um, another quick thing, if you're using VS Code, so I jumped in there. If you press Control R, then you see like kind of all all of the things over here. If you if you type in a column, then it will it will group them. See, like it says like classes over here, interfaces over here, methods over here. Uh, there's some you know modules, packages, and structs and whatever you know. It somehow tries to map you know Scala constructs to to this. And so now that it's grouped, you, you you see all of these methods over here, right? So there's raise error, handle error with, blah, blah, blah. Just look at their signatures. And, uh, you know, in fact, in a couple of videos from now, we're going to play around with, you know, handle error and raise error and also attempt and uh, recover and, and things like this. All right. Uh, but again, like I'm not actually planning to make a video solely about applicative error. Just jump in there, look at the signatures and, uh, you know, you should be good to go. And by the way, now that we're using tagless final, we actually, uh, you know, don't really see that there is an either behind the scenes. Okay. So we, for example, we could, uh, you know, we could switch to validate it. So um, uh, let me duplicate this. Let me bring these guys down like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cursor over here and I'm going to say, uh, please don't look for the instances for an either. Please look for the instances for uh, for the validated. Okay. And it should find that uh, if I have actually cats data, import cats data like this. Let's go down and 
uh, wrong number of tab parameters to had. Uh, okay, so this is the f, and this over here is the integer. Okay, because we have a we have a list of integers. Okay, so now instead of an either, we have you know validated and then you know valid and valid and stuff. Okay, uh, but again, like this stuff should not be uh, you know should not be super surprising as, as of right now. All right, so enough of the recap. So let's go to the article. And the article basically says, um, all of this time we have been looking at the return type, right? We started with an A and then we said, okay, it's not enough. So let's go to an option. And let's go to an either, you know, let's go to an F. And the article basically says, um, we're basically always dealing with the fact that the list might not be empty. Why don't we instead uh, go into, sorry for scrolling up and down. Why don't we go into this list over here that, that comes in and you know somewhere before we make sure that it's just not empty, right? And then retrieving the head would be super, super simple. Okay. Now, even though cats has an, uh, you know, a non-empty list and non-empty set, non-empty vector and all of these things, we actually don't really need them because lists by themselves are an ADT. And one of the, one of the forms of the ADT is already defined as, you know, as a non-empty list, um, as a reminder. So if I have, uh, I'm just going to create some custom scope over here. I'm just going to recreate a list real quick. Okay. Should be super simple. Uh, we have a class list, uh, plus a over here extends product with serializable and we're going to have a final case class uh, it's pronounced cons right these two columns pronounced cons and it's covariant as well okay head which is an a and a tail which is another list of a and it extends list of a and the other version is case object nil extends list uh, nothing. Now, we're not going to use this list. I'm just reminding you that there's already a version of the list that cannot be empty, right? We're forced to pass it in the head, okay? So if you were to write a function that does not want the list, uh, but instead of wants like this this specific, you know, this specific, this particular form, then we wouldn't, we wouldn't need to deal with the errors, okay? So if we go over here, I'm going to duplicate that. Let's actually go and uh, copy the very first one, uh, this one, okay? Gonna go down um, like this, paste it in. This is going to be, I believe, five, right? So we have four. This is going to be five. Okay. So why don't we just say that this is a cons? Okay. Just like this. Okay. So technically, this makes this a non-empty list, right? Non-empty, non-empty list. Okay. So let's steal one of the print lines like this. Da -da 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 -da. Let's go down over here, and this is going to be had had five. Okay, so now that it says, you know, polymorphic expression cannot be instantiated to expect a type. And it says there's a, you know, there's a type mismatch, you know, you're giving us a list, but I wanted a cons. Okay, in fact, for this particular case, um, let's actually do this. Let's have value input, and we're going to say that this is a list int, like that. Okay, and we're going to do print line at five of some input right so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to to improve the error message okay so there's an any over there let's also do an int int like this okay and this this cons looks also looks weird let's uh let's also have a tiny alias over here let's have a let's have an alias so it's pronounced cons right but it's basically a uh, an empty list it's like a construction of a list okay let's also have a val for the companion object and now we can do over here we can say cons Okay, now the error message should be should be a little bit better. Okay, so it says I found a list of integers, but I actually want a cons of integers, right? Or like in the, like the non uh, non empty thing. Okay, and this is the the important bit. So now we are forced to parse the input before we call this function. Okay, so now we're forced to do something like this. Let me comment this, let this line out. We're forced to do something like input match. Okay, and if it's a non empty list, you know, which is a cons of int. Okay, well, then we can actually call the function, right? Had five with the non empty, with a non empty list. Okay, it's going to warn me that the match uh, might, might may not be exhaustive. So for the underscore, we're going to say a print line. I just can't call the head. Okay, right? So this is, you know, this is a, um, this is a safe API. Now it throws an exception because we have like question marks over here, right? Uh, but if we do like list of empty, it's going to say, you know, I'm sorry, I cannot call call had over here right and if we have a list of one to three you know then it's going to be fine and it's going to it's going to manage to call it now this is a way better approach you know dealing with the stronger types because the earlier we deal with these situations the more information we have about what went wrong and at the very least we can provide this information uh, to our user 
right? And the worst case scenario is that the later this happens in the chain, we might not even be able to handle the situation. Let me go to the Teglas Funnel project. Remember in the uh, in the Postgres part uh, part of the series, uh, we had this thing called statement, and inside of it. Uh, which one? This one. And inside of it, we had codex, and we we created this codec for um, you know that, that would uh, basically go from a string to UUID and back, right? But this one can obviously throw an exception. And over here, because it happens so late, like there's not even an, an error channel over here. Like, what can we do if there's an error? The only thing we can do is the wrong thing, which is you know to throw an exception. So let me go back. Now, in the beginning of this video, I said that there are two things that we need to talk about. One is why do I refuse to hard code a um, specific type like a UUID or integer, and the other um, thing is that why do I uh, why, why did I use an ADT for the uh, for the to do's right over here right so now at least you know why I use an ADT because an ADT gives me access to this extra type right so I can go over here and use this type and then I will know you know just by looking at the type that the ID is not there and therefore this is not something that is already in a database okay this is just data this is not um, not an actual to do and in fact, uh, there, there are some areas where we actually already used it. Uh, for example, if I go into the actual, um, you know, in one of the gateways, doesn't matter which one, for example, in the memory entity gateway, we're gonna see that over here, I wrote, I had like these two functions, you know, the statement insert one and statement update one, and they're working with um, the explicit subtype of this ADT, right? doesn't work you know with the entire ADT it's it's very specific right so it needs to make sure for example over here when, when we call update one it needs to, it needs to make sure in the type that the ID is already there let's actually go back and go back over here and uh, I want I want to make it super clear that there is a reason why uh, you know like this this is the reason why lists for example are not defined like this instead okay so if I'm gonna do a custom two you know final case class, you know, list of A, okay? It's gonna be in the head, and that is gonna be optional, right? This is the thing that people usually do with IDs, right? Uh, you know, they would say, you know, the ID is an option, okay? And tail, option, list of A, okay? And uh, let's just do none over here, okay? And we're gonna say that nil, which is just going to be a custom to list of nothing, is going to be just a list where they had what I had is none. So now with this encoding, I cannot go and I cannot, uh, let me have this one, I'm gonna call it head six, I'm gonna move it down in just a second, okay? So if I wanted to, to work with this one, right, with custom two, custom two dot, and the only type that I have is list, right? And now I'm I'm in this I'm in the similar situation over here that I need to like you know to call get on an option and stuff, right? This is this is a super weird implementation. Let me actually move this down. Um, over here, maybe. Uh, actually, I need this one. Let's have it like over here. Okay. Uh, by the way, there is a um, you know because Scala is so so flexible and so awesome. Uh, there's actually a hack uh, to to get around this, and I'm going to show this to you. But I'm showing it to you just for fun. Okay. So don't don't get confused. Okay. So we can. Um, we can create a type class that would witness uh, that this a you know that the inferred type of this a cannot be nothing. It it needs to be something. Okay. And the way you do this. Is by saying something like uh, sealed trait or you know sealed abstract class, sealed abstract class, something it needs to be contravariant. That's very important. Um, yeah, let's call it T. Okay, uh, extends uh, product product with serializable, and we're gonna have an object something, and um, we're gonna use a trick that we're gonna have two implicit instances. And uh, because they're going to be in the same scope, they're going to cause an ambiguity, okay? And this is what we're going to abuse over here. So we're going to say implicit object anything extends uh, something of any, okay? But we're also going to have an uh, object over here, which is going to be a weird contradiction. And we're going to say that this is going to be a something of something of nothing, like this, okay? Oh, it complains about the products. Uh, whatever, let's do this, okay? Cool. So now with, with this thing, uh, let me copy that. Let's uh, call it hat, hat seven. So now we can say of this A needs to be a witness that it's actually a something, right? Of this one. Okay. And over here, we're going to say, you know, the, the rest is pretty much uh, going to stay the same. So now, for example, we can call hat seven, right? Was a custom to list of some, uh, you know, someone and none. 
this is gonna this is gonna work just fine. Let's actually, you know, print it out, print line. Okay, and we're gonna do a print line. Um, uh, hat seven. Hat, come on, hat seven. Custom to list of int sum one none. So it's all good. However, if we're trying to do this print line custom to nil, uh, I forgot to call head seven. And there we go had seven like this then it shouldn't compile right so we're we're abusing this trick with with the ambiguous implicit values okay because it's going to say that it doesn't it doesn't know which one to apply this one or this one okay but this is just a hack right um so yeah in fact i'm going to i'm going to remove this um had seven and uh remove this thing all right there we go so again, I just showed you this for fun. Um, and the point of this was that, uh, you know, people, especially the beginners who get into Scala, they're super, super happy about options. Uh, they're super happy with the fact that they don't have to deal with, with nulls. Um, however, once you gain a little bit more experience, a custom ADT is usually better. Uh, and therefore you should always, you know, go for ADTs instead of, uh, instead of having options, even, even for things like uh, IDs. All right, so now we know why we should use ADTs instead of, instead of options, but what about that other thing? right uh, why do we keep insisting to not hard code something like a UUID now we already had issues with um, with strings uh, for example um, over here in some controller uh, we had some like uh, two ID and over here if you remember you know the user would give us some string and we would try to parse it you know on the left this is the error message and we would try to like sort of parse it into into some other string right because like you know the 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 ID in the domain is a string, right? So we, you know, string comes in, string comes out, and we don't actually know which form it should have. And so, you know, this code that I have over here is, is super, super random, right? I just wanted to have some, you know, when I developed this application like two years ago, I wanted to show something, uh, you know, to have some sort of logic, right? Because this is a CRUD app, there is like no logic in there, okay? Um, but this is like completely wrong because we have no idea which, um, you know, which um, structure the the string is going to have and so uh you know what what most people do is they just hard code a uuid or an integer and you know and then they know okay you know what to parse it into and therefore they know when it's going to fail however in my opinion this is a um th this price is a little bit too high to pay uh, we already had this this discussion in the video about um uh, about postgres and so i'm not going to repeat myself and so today we're going to see a solution of um how to how to get access to this structure without hard coding something like a UUID or an integer. Now it's still going to have a price, right? There's nothing perfect in this life. There's, you know, nothing, nothing is, is free in this life. However, this price, in my opinion, is going to be lower than the price that we're going to pay by hard coding the UUID. In fact, a couple of videos from now, uh, we're going to reap the benefits of what we're going to do today to our to-do IDs. And ironically, the solution to this problem is tagless however it's not the tagless final it's the tagless initial embedding right so what does this all mean uh well if you look at the to-do id uh right which is the w w i'm sorry at the to-do the only th which is the only thing that we have in our domain uh which part of the entire code in the entire domain which is currently only this file which of it cares about the fact that an id should be a string and if i open all of that none of it cares right nothing here touches the id right if i double click on the id you know nothing was uh marked if i do um, match whole word you know nothing was matched id there's only um it says two selected where's the other one oh it says two characters selected right so nothing over here touches the id okay uh what about the next layer like uh core so if we go to core and then we have the boundary and the entity gateway if we go to the boundary okay uh let's search for id okay so there's id over, over here which is just a string uh let's actually go to the implementation read one by id okay what does it do well it just passes it along to read many by id and what does it do it just passes it along to the gateway right so um the what i'm trying to show you over here is that uh none of the code in the domain and none of the code in the core actually cares about this type obviously then th there has to be some type you know hashtag parametric polymorphism right but we don't really care which one because we never inspect it we just pass it along all the time same in the entity uh, uh, in the entity gateway right ids you know vector of string you know but it just 
all being just passed along. Nothing is, you know, trying to compare it for equality. Um, nothing is trying to figure out, you know, um, it's very common to like try to get like the date out of the UUID or the object ID in Mongo and so on, right? None of, we're not trying to do any of that. Now, why, you know, where, where, do, where, do, these, uh, where do these strings uh, come from? And wh where, you know, what actually cares about the type? Well, the implementation cares, right? So for example, the in-memory entity gateway, in-memory entity gateway, over here, um, somewhere it, you know, probably somewhere inside of statement, uh, statement insert one, um, over here, right? So this one actually generates the ID, right? And so it looks like the ID is going to be just an integer, right? Because remember we were using like the size of the vector, okay? But then we're forced to convert it back to string because core demands it to be a string because domain demands it to be a string, but they actually don't care about it being a string, okay? And so where do the where do the other strings come from? Where the other strings come from 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 the user, right? As I have as we have just seen, you know, over here, you know, the user puts some string in, and then you know we're parsing it in, into into something. And what is that something again? It's a string because the core said that it wants a string, but it actually doesn't want the string. Okay, so we need to find a way how the um, you know the memory uh, entity gateway, right? So how the basically how the in, how the uh, entity gateway can dictate the type and how the controller without knowing the type can somehow parse a string into that, okay? This is what we need to figure out. And uh, what we're going to do now, it is going to uh, be a, a superior solution because uh, in the end, the only code that will not compile is going to be this part over here, right? Uh, it, will, it will show us that controller has no business knowing uh, what the t what the type is, right? Um, it's actually much much easier to show you than uh, than actually to explain. So let's go let's go and do it. So all we need to do is we need to go to the uh, to the to do over here, and we need to say that there will be some parameter over here. Let's call let's let's call it a, and this is going to be the ID. Okay. In fact, this is similar to the expression problem. Remember um, the expression problem that we had in the very beginning, um, at the very very top in our DSLs. We had our F and we had our, our A, okay? It's a very, um, you know, very uh, similar thing. Uh, in fact, in this particular case, I'm actually going to call it to-do ID. To-do ID, like this. To-do ID, okay? So this is the, chance, the change that we're going to go through, and it's going to be a super, super trivial change. Uh, however, do not underestimate the cost, right? Even though, like, this is my preferred solution, uh, I'm not going to lie to you, there is some cost, and we're going to see this in, in just a couple of um, in just a couple of seconds. And the cost is basically that we need to drag this parameter along through all of the layers, okay? So um, let me go over here and... Um, just for fun, we're going to use uh, Bloop today. I feel like I feel like using Bloop today. Okay, so uh, let's do uh, domain compile and uh, watch. Okay, I didn't save the file yet, which is why it still compiles. Okay, so uh, basically we're going to say that um, the to do is going to have a to do ID. Let me create more space over here, like this. Okay, and by the way, in a couple of um, in a couple of minutes, we we will need to make it covariant, but I'm going to leave it like this for now. Okay, so we have it over here, we have it over here. Um, we have it, uh, we need to do over here with this uh, F-bounded polymorphism over here. Um, so now when we're extending the to-do, we need to uh, pass it along, right? Just like dragging it along, along with us um, all the time. Okay, uh, so this is going to be an existing of to-do ID, uh, you know, the one that comes over here and uh, over here. Uh, this is going to be data that extends to do of nothing. By the way, it's super, super um, um, similar to an option, as we will see in the next video, um, in the next video as well. Okay, I believe this is actually all that we need. Yeah, so the domain still compiles, okay? However, if we, if we switch to compiling the core, it is obviously not going to compile, right? So a bunch of errors. Uh, let me actually, okay, let me do this. So let me go to core, uh, which just has the boundary. Okay, let's start with the boundary, okay? So all we need to do is we need to have a, an extra parameter over here, which is going to be to do ID, okay? Now, I need to be very careful with uh, search and replaces over here. So basically, every every existing has an ID now, right? So um, over here, right? This one. So basically, every time I'm saying something like existing and the curly brace closes, 
then we're going to insert a to do ID over here. Okay. And by the way, let me show you the um, 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 the um, in fact, um, let's actually let's actually revert this and let's start with the entity gateway because it's much smaller. Okay, it's just, it's just a trade. It's just you know uh, similar to look at. Okay, so this is the cost that I meant, right? So right now, like the only domain entity that uh, this entity gateway is dealing with is the to do ID. However, if it was more like I don't know location ID, product ID, and whatever, uh, you would have you know more parameters, right? Location ID, you know, uh, I don't know product ID, I don't know owner ID, whatever. Right, so uh, you obviously could use only one, uh, but this would mean that all of them would be, you know, because something in the end will have to specify it, right? So something in the end will have to say, okay, this is a UUID or this is an integer, okay? Uh, however, if you have a, a, a separate type for them, then you don't even need something like tag types, right? Something like opaque types, at least for the IDs, right? And at least at this layer, you won't need to because the, the, the compiler will just be able to distinguish this type from, uh, from this one, okay? But as of right now, we just have the, we just have the to-do ID. Okay, and so everywhere where we have existing and we have the curly brace, I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to say to do ID. Okay, over here, uh, we're also going to have the to do ID. And over here, like even though this whole thing compiles, I need to be very careful and I need to make sure that over here, for example, over here, IDs come in and this is a string, it should be already a to do ID. Okay, and um, yeah, so this is the only string that is left. This is a partial description. And by the way, this would be a perfect place for, uh, for something like an opaque type. Okay, so we fixed this one. Uh, let's go back to the boundary and we're going to do the similar trick, right? So we're going to do, in fact, I can press control Y a little bit, okay, like this. Okay, so let's see. Um, same thing over here. I just need to be like every string, like every string I need to inspect real quick. Okay, this one we can skip. Um, okay, maybe like this where the curly brace is like that uh, to do ID. Okay. Let's see, string. I'm just uh, double clicking on it so that it shows me the next string. It's fine. Okay, now over here is the same deal, right? In the implementation, the to do ID needs to come in and so that the entity gateway can, you know, so that they can all agree on the to do ID. And uh, I'm going to do a to do ID over here. And we're going to do a to do ID over here. Okay, so now it's over there. Okay. Um, I believe that this is this is the place where um, okay so this is another to do ID. Um, this is the same to do ID. Um, do we have any string 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 string? Okay, so um, this is the only place which is the weird place with this f bounded polymorphism and whatever. This is the place that forces us to go back and to make sure that uh, you know that these guys are covariant over here, like this. Okay. Uh, what do we have here? Um, it's still not happy. Okay, we also need to do a to-do ID over here. Uh, what else? Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, covariant type to-do occurs in invariant position. Uh, really? Hold on. Maybe this one should not be. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So this one needs to be covariant like this. See? But but this one doesn't, All right? Which I actually, which I'm actually not super sure. Uh, this actually might be a bug in the compiler. Anyway, so um, this is the entire uh, core layer, and so uh, now we're going to go into the next layers. Um, and we have, you know, we have many of them. So let's start with uh, persistence. Okay, source main. It has a statement and it has the in-memory entity gateway. Let's start with the statement. You know, I'm trying. I'm always trying to like start with the with the lower layer. Okay, and over here in the statement, this is the one that is going to need to know the uh, the type of um, the type of the ID. Okay, and therefore we don't need to pass in. You know, uh, we don't need to do something like this, right? Because this is the place that will dictate the ID. And in this particular case, the IDs are going to be integers, right? So in fact, uh, like the same trick, right? So everywhere where we do this, like that. Uh, we're going to say that this is going to be integer like this okay all right same thing over here integer let's create more space um same thing over here so now next id is going to be an integer right so we don't need to do these these weird like two strings um basically everywhere where it needs a parameter we're going to insert an integer okay this part is fine by the way we didn't switch to compiling that compile persistence like this all right, so we have the statement. Let's go to in-memory entity gateway. 
and over here it's going to be the same thing so existing like this it's just going to be integer like this and over here this is going to be an entity gateway of f and int okay same thing over here to do int uh, to do existing int okay uh, what else okay IDs over here they need to be ints um, Oh, let's see. That's the last thing, it seems. Yeah. Okay. So again, like the persistence layer is the one that actually knows that these are going to be integers. And um, right now we're going to go to the other persistence layer, you know, the one for, for Postgres. And this one is going to say that they're going to be UUIDs. Okay. So we're going to go into statement. Same as we did before. Let's switch to compiling of that. Um, so this is going to be persistence uh, Postgres skunk. This one okay so we're gonna go over here and um, over here we're going to pretty much um, we're going to pretty much throw out the um, this codec uh, not this one hold on where is it this one okay so uh, by the way if you're dealing with tagged types if, if you're not happy with just having a UUID on this layer and you wanted to tag the type then you would still keep a codec similar to this one it would just go from the you know from the untagged UUID to the tagged one but as of right now we can pretty much throw it out and we're going to um, everywhere where we're saying uh, UUID dot string we're just gonna say UUID okay so this is going to be an existing of UUID. Uh, maybe over here I can just do this trick as always UUID. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, same thing over here, UUID. Uh, to twiddle, to twiddle, existing of UID and therefore the last one over here is going to be the UID and over here uh, I don't know how to do existing codec uh, UID dot list oh okay over here it's going to be UIDs and uh, here same deal probably UIDs okay it's not like this makes just like way more sense uh, let me just see string okay so this is the by description so this should be the only string yeah it seems like this is the only string okay so let's go to Postgres entity gateway over here like this similar deal right so we're gonna say over here and over here I'm gonna hard code it to UUID uh, which we don't even have here please import it oh no not like this uh, import Java util UUID UUID okay so uh, to do over here UUID and to do existing let's mark all of them do UUID all right over here same thing UUID and there we go like this is the this is this entire layer okay great so the next one that we're going to talk about is going to be the uh, delivery layer so close this one close this one and delivery over here source main um okay so these guys probably don't deal with them at all console also crud okay so this is probably the only one that cares okay so uh let's switch to compiling that come on do, 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 do. Delivery like this. Okay, let's go up. Okay, so again, uh, over here it has no idea what the actual type is going to be. So this is going to be a controller of. Do I actually need this here? I probably don't even need this over here. I can just have it in the implementation, can I not? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so I'm just going to say it needs to be here and now it needs to be passed along over here, right? But the tray doesn't care about, right? And so we don't need it. We don't need to have it over here. All right, so let's go down. Okay, so to do existing. Okay, so this is the this is the interesting parts. So wizard1 will probably already have the to do ID. 
and this is going to be a to-do existing of to-do ID like this okay because the boundary read one by ID it already wants the to-do ID uh, what else do we have same thing over here like with ID prompt it should like if it's a valid ID then it's already gonna be a to-do ID like this okay which means that this to ID is going to be forced to give us the to do ID over here right and by the way like this is the point uh, you know once I once I fix the remaining uh, issues in fact let me let me fix the remaining issues real quick um, okay over here of to do ID and uh, over here to do ID okay there we go and as promised this is the only place that is that is left to do because now it has no idea how to convert a string into a to-do ID and it should not know how to do this right so instead we're gonna have a function that will be injected into the controller that will uh, you know explain how to parse a string into a to-do ID so as of right now uh, we're just going to do this um, hmm I'm actually going to leave it like this because I, I don't want it to compile. Um, I just want to go to the other controller uh, real quick. Uh, where is it? Um, here. Right, this one. No, not this one. Um, um, okay, so there's a response. You know, this is like the JSON one that we're going to return. Uh, and it's going to have some to-do ID. So we're going to need to inject it somewhere over here, to-do ID. And um, so this is the, this is one of the things that we're not going to uh, encode, right? Because like in on the JVM, you can convert anything to a string. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could use uh, you know cats um, cat show over here. Uh, if we jump in there, it's basically just you know it's a type class to provide textual representation. It is meant to be a better to string, whereas to string exists for any object, regardless of whether or not the creator of the class explicitly made it to string method. A show instance will only exist if someone explicitly provided one. But this is too much over engineering for us, so we don't we don't need to do this. We can just call to string over here. Okay. Uh, this one over here, controller, uh, it's going to be the same deal uh, that this is going to be some to do ID, to do ID, and this is going to be F comma to do ID like this and there will be some issues over here so again like was read one it's going to already have a to do ID over here and therefore this is going to be a to do ID it's it's exactly the same change right and uh, now some uh, parse and compile okay so we're giving okay, so which was ID prompt would need to it gets a string on valid that's gonna be a to do ID like this and uh, it's the same deal, uh, pipe to ID. Okay, so this one now needs to, to do ID and now it's not gonna compile for, for exactly the same reason. All right, so now we need to inject a function into the controller that would know how to parse this. However, this, this function is going to be so, um, not really general, but it's going to be so much, you know, reusable, right? There's only one way to parse UUIDs or there's only one way to parse, you know, an integer, right, from, from, from a string. Okay, and therefore what we're going to do is we're going to create a tiny util submodule. It's a little bit of an over engineer, but it's super easy to create submodules in um, in a in an SPT multi build. And it's just going to sit on top, and whoever needs it is going to use it. And over there, uh, we're going to have something like a uh, something like a parser, and we're going to have um, you know two implementations of that parser. You know, the one that can uh, parse a UUID and the one that can parse an integer. Okay, um, so let's uh, let's open the build. Let's open the build. And we're going to go to the top and we're just going to say that we're going to aggregate uh, one more project. We're going to call it util. Uh, let's, just, let's just do that. That it's going to be called util. Util like this, nice and easy. And it's going to live, so to, so to say, on the, on, the level, uh, on the level zero. And since it's a util library, it would be good to have, uh, a, um, uh, to have cats there uh, because it's a, um, you know, it's a util library as well. It's not only a functional library. Plus plus equal sequel sequence of org type level type level get score like this no not now okay so um as of right now only only the delivery layers right so only the controller needs it so we're gonna go and we're gonna say that it will need core and it will also need util like this and same deal over here like this okay um in fact uh, a couple of videos from now we're going to have more utils and then we're gonna um just allow the 
allow the allow the domain to use util. Okay, but as of right now, uh, you know, let's be as um, as precise as we can. All right, so now we can import the build and um, uh, pa -pa 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 -pa. while it imports, it should create this folder for us uh, once it once it finishes. Let me actually close uh, close all the others, close this one as well. Let's show the logs. Come on, show the logs. Let's see what it's doing. There we go. Um, I have bad experiences with trying to create files while while it's running its own thing. Okay, but now it seems like it it's finished. Okay, so we can go back to zero zero util and we're going to create a new file and we're gonna do source main scala com uh, com dev inside you. I'm gonna call it parse. Um, my initial in my initial uh, preparation for this, uh, I actually used to call it uh, a total function because it's going to be a function that takes something and produces an either, uh, right? But I decided to call it parse. Okay, so uh, we're just going to call it parse, and it's going to be basically a function, right? It's going to take some input, you know, it's going to be a function one, parse one two. In fact, it's going to extend function one, extends function one from either, and we're going to have a throwable. Or a two over here. Okay. And by the way, a couple of videos from now, we're going to have a conversation. Um, you know, when to hard code an either and when to use uh, something like applicative error and stuff. All right. Uh, let's actually switch to compiling uh, util like this. All right. It compiles. Okay. So uh, we're going to have an object parse over here, and we're going to have two implementations, and they're both going to be implicit, and we're going to see why in just a couple of seconds. Okay. So it's going to be implicit val. It's going to be parse string to uid. It's going to be a parse string to UUID like this, okay? And we're gonna use SAM types, right? So we're not gonna say like, you know, new parse and, you know, um, you know override def apply, which comes from function one. Uh, we're just gonna use uh, SAM types, right? So um, if uh, the Scala compiler sees that you're trying to use a Lambda uh, for a type that has only a single abstract method function, uh, single abstract method, single abstract method, SAM, right? S-A-M, then it will do this conversion for us, right? It, it will convert a Lambda into a parse in this case. Okay, so all we need to do is we need to say either uh, catch non fatal, which comes from cats, import cats uh, syntax all like this, catch non fatal, UUID from string, string like this. Okay, and yes, we need the UUID, import Java util UUID, whoa, UUID, like this. Okay, so this lambda has been converted into an instance of parse for us, Scala is us, okay? So the other one we're going to have is going to be parse string, uh, string to int parse, parse string int, same deal, string, either catch none, fatal, we're gonna say string to int, right? And I don't like the, the error message that usually comes from, uh, from, from this parsing, so we're just gonna do a left map over here and we're gonna have a cause over here, and we're going to say new illegal argument, uh, help me over here, argument exception, and um, this is going to be some message, and uh, this is going to be the cause, okay? So the message is going to be attempt to convert, and we're gonna have quotes over here, string to int failed miserably. All right, so this is this is the thing, okay? This is the parse, okay? And then we can go to the controllers, controller, um, yeah, this one, okay? And we're simply going to say that we also need a function, which is gonna come in implicitly, uh, and I'm gonna show you why in just a couple of seconds. Uh, so we're gonna say implicit parse, okay? Which is going to be a parse, okay? We need to know how to parse, you know, how to go from a string to a to-do ID, okay? Simple as that. And now over here, we can simply use it. Okay, all we need to do is we need to parse a user input, which is going to give us an either uh, either either throwable to do ID. And all we need to do is we need to do left map. I always forget if it's left map or if it's a map left, right? Get message or to string. And this is the only thing that we need. Okay, and so in fact, we can actually just copy that, you know, go to the other controller, which is uh, over here. Okay, same deal. We can just paste it. Right, because it's exactly exactly the same thing. We just also need to paste the parse. By the way, as a reminder, uh, the context bound, you know, they've been provided implicitly, and we have a seemingly second 
implicit parameter list. Uh, however, for context bound, there is an exception, right? So the, these, these lists will be merged, okay? And so uh, at the very top, same deal, whatever, just paste it over here, okay? Great. Uh, let's actually try to compile the whole thing to do cascade and watch it. All right, so something in the, uh, okay, so the main doesn't compile. No, hold on, which ones don't compile? Do, 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 do. Okay, only these ones, okay, and the dependency graph. So if you go to the dependency graph, well, actually, uh, I can just click it. Oh yeah, this is the thing that I'm that I'm getting with, with WSL2, but not a big deal because we're using Bloop. Okay, so, and this is a dependency graph. Uh, this is the HTTP4S. Okay, so um, HTTP for res, but the one was the memory entity gateway, so this is going to be an integer. Okay, and the other one, which is going to be this one, again, like this. Okay, so in this particular case, uh, same deal, integer. All right, everything actually compiles. Okay, so let me actually show you what... Um, sort of like, not what this means, but uh, let me just show you this on the dependency graph, the one that uses Postgres, for example, uh, for example, this one, okay? Uh, I wanna show you why I used, uh, you know, implicits over there, okay? So over here, where we're assembling the entire dependency graph, this Postgres entity gateway, inside of it, remember it has it because it's a Postgres thing, uh, it has a hard-coded UUID, so you don't see the UUID anywhere over here. However, the compiler knows that this is a UID, and so over here at the bottom, it actually injects, you know, implicitly, well, first of all, the effect um, sync, uh, but it also injects for you the, um, you know, the parser, right? So what's happening down here is it says, you know, can we please have the, you know, the effect sync of F, and also can we please uh, implicitly, I spelled it correctly, implicitly, can we also uh, please get the parse from string to UUID, okay? So this is what's, um, you know, Java util, Java util dot UUID. This is what's happening behind the scenes, right? And so behind the scenes, it goes over here and it actually retrieves the parse dot, uh, parse string to UUID, okay? So this whole thing is happening implicitly. This is why I made it implicit, even though inside of the controller, we're actually not using it implicitly. We're actually calling it, uh, not this one, this one, right? We're actually calling it. Okay. In fact, in this particular case, we uh, we actually wouldn't even be able to use it uh, implicitly, right? Because left map is also defined implicitly. Okay. Um, however, we would be able to do something like this: uh, user input, maybe, maybe, uh, user input dot left dot map get message. Yeah. So over here, this is basically an implicit implicit, right? So on the user input, we're calling left. Right, but left is actually defined on an either. Okay, so we're not seeing like how this string is being converted into, into parse. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, into into the to do ID. And uh, you know these implicits are usually frowned upon. Right, so this is technically a, a view bound, um, and so uh, we're going to call it explicitly. Okay, but I, but I but I really want to pass it in um, implicitly because over here we're going to have many of these dependency graphs. And they would all need to pass it in, right? Because like pretty much like all the controllers, uh, I'm sorry, all the all the graphs would either need the, like the UID or the or the um, or the integer. Okay, um, it's kind of cool. So uh, now we, what we can do is we can take it for a spin. So um, in fact, let me actually go into SBT, and now SBT would need to you know to do the whole uh, recompilation dance. Uh, while it loads, let's go into the client.http and see what we got here. So we have this thing. Let's go into uh, main HTTP, HTTP for us, uh, Postgres skunk, for example, this one. Let's start it real quick. And let's do show all. Let's see if we actually have something in the database. And we do. Okay. So now, uh, for example, when we, um, when we, well, it doesn't really matter. When we update the description, for example, this one, for this one, it's going to say no to do is found. However, if we have like a space over here, right, uh, which is, you know, technically a, you know, like a bug now, right, there's a, there's a space, this is not a value to UID. So if we're going to send this request, it's going to say for input string, blah, blah, blah. Uh, by the way, this is actually what is happening inside of uuid.from string. Uh, let's actually do something better like, uh, like blah, like this and send this, 
yeah, invalid UUID string, blah. Okay, and which also means that if we, you know, if we switch to to the integers, right? If we switch to, oh, I killed this PT, man. Just a just a habit. I press Control C. I, sh I shouldn't have done this. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's load it. And uh, <laughs> by the way, notice these uh, generated bloop um, bloop to do build uh, since the latest metals uh, version. Uh, Metals actually uh, understands your build files. I couldn't actually get it to work, um, but uh, but yeah, it generates a bunch of um, a bunch of dot metals files in the project folder, right? So we have project inside of over there. We have like metals dot spt, but then inside of it we have project, and inside of it we have metals dot spt. Inside of it we have project, and inside of it we have metals dot spt, which is why spt takes uh, longer to start. And ideally, it should now understand the build. However, uh, for some reason, you know, like simple things it can understand, like it can show me that this is a sequence. Well, right now it can't even. Okay, so right now I it actually managed to jump into sequence, um, but it doesn't seem to be able to jump into like SPT stuff, right? Like over here, it, it can't jump into like project and stuff. Um, anyway, so over here, it's going to be the same thing, right? So we're going to send this, but now it's going to say, you know, attempt to convert blah to int failed, right? So now it knows exactly, uh, you know, uh, how to do the whole... Um, and the whole validation and we're pretty much done with this video um and i know that this is getting like way too long uh, but i want to i want to show you one uh one tiny other thing uh let's switch to root and um you know just compile everything um in the hold on let me do this let me do that in the um in the controller um for um, in the regular controller okay uh, we have a function over here called um, display display zero or many over here, right? And so it has like this thing encoded in there that, you know, this vector that we're passing in, it might be empty, right? This is also how it's called, you know, zero or many. And so we're going we're gonna to do the same trick over here real quick. And we're going to make sure that the vector that comes in is not empty, right? So uh, we're going to go to the top and we're going to use a non-empty vector from cat's data, cat's data, like this. So let's go back down to display zero or many. Okay, so we're gonna rename it to display, you know, one or many. Okay, well, first of all, let me um, mark all of them. Display, display one or many. This should take just a couple of minutes. Okay, so um, this vector, we're gonna make sure this is a non-empty vector. A non-empty vector. Okay, therefore we don't need to do this if else thing, right? We can just remove this and have the curly brace over here like this. And so um, over here it says could not find implicit value for parameter. Okay, so this is a, this is just a, a cat's thing, right? So they they have their own version of ordering, and there's a way to just do order dot from ordering, right? So we're converting like the Scala ordering to um, to the cat's ordering. Okay. Um, so now if we go over here, it's gonna say okay, we're we're showing all, right? But there's a chance that um, you know that that it's empty, and so uh, what we need to do is over here we're doing read all, which gives us an f of a of a of a vector. All we need to do is we need to go over here. We need to say map, and we're gonna map it to a non-empty vector from vector, which is gonna give us an option of a vector. Okay, and so now we're gonna flat map, and we're gonna say you know if 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 none of them are there, then we're gonna say display um, no to do's found message, right? This one, and otherwise display one or many, right? This thing. In fact, uh, I'm going to um, hold up like this. All right, I'm going to just copy these two lines. I'm going to go over here and I pretty much can do the same thing over here. Right. And I pretty much can do the same thing over here. Right. And this is the one where we can actually uh, reap the benefits, right? So over here, if you compare, for example, this search by ID, which looked a little bit weird because we had this, we had this like escape hatch, you know, the one we had a method that would what was able to um, to render like uh, you know an empty vector and a full vector. If you compare this to the controller in the HTTP, which is over here, uh, not this one, controller uh, HTTP, um, this one. If you go to search, come on, search. Where's the search by ID? Uh, hold on. Do, 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 do. Search by ID. There we go. Oh, it's because it's like nesting. Okay. So uh, if I uh, put it to the right, like this, if you compare them, they're doing like slightly, slightly different things, right? So even though we have wizard one, and we also have a wizard one over here, 
we were not using it. Like so, I didn't. I did it by mistakes. By mistake. So we were going straight to the boundary that read one by ID, right? And then we, before we had to like map this option that came back to a vector, right? We already have this with read one thing that handles the you know the the optionality, okay? And so now we can actually go and use it over here, right? So we can like throw out all um, all of this stuff, right? So we're still gonna have like with ID prompt, but then um, we're gonna have the same thing as we have on the right, right? We're gonna say you know with read one, pass in the ID. Uh, you know, and then in the uh, to do comes out like this, and we're gonna say uh, display one or many. And in this particular case, uh, we're gonna construct a vector of to do. Okay, because in this particular case, it's gonna be a uh, you know we always know that this is one, right? And so now you know we have like a bit of consistency over here. Okay, so we can throw this out. Whoops. And there we go. And it behaves exactly the same, right? In fact, we can actually run it uh, real quick. Uh, let's switch to the regular main. Uh, let's just run it. Actually, let's switch to the um, to the one with the database because then we already have some um, some idea. Oh, no, no. Let's run this one. Let's run this one. Uh, okay. So uh, we can search by ID, for example, right? And we can say blah, and it's gonna say exactly, you know, it's gonna do the right thing for us. And if we create, you know, if we search by ID, I don't know, if, uh, zero, right? It's gonna say, um, no, hold on, search by ID, uh, zero. It's gonna say no to this found. And if we actually create, you know, uh, by milk like this uh, to 28, today's the 27th, uh, 11.05, like this, show all, search by ID five, it's like, um, okay, search by ID five, search by ID zero, it's gonna, it's gonna be found. Great, okay? So it works exactly, exactly as before, it just that now, um, you know, now everything works properly. So let me go through the whole thing and make sure that I didn't do anything stupid and then we're gonna uh, commit and uh, push it. All right, so show me this thing as a tree. Okay, so we have the parse. Um, like this, close others, parse, uh, it looks fine to do. Okay, we just added the parameter, boundary. Okay, just, okay, it actually doesn't make sense to review this because we changed like so much because of this, um, uh, because of the ID. Uh, it was a lot. Controller. All right, all right. Around statement, just a parameter everywhere. Mm -hmm. Statement, yeah, we remove the codec over here. That's fine. Dependency graph. Oh, actually, in the statement, in the yeah, in this one, I actually want to see it because I really need to make sure that the um strings are still aligned because VS Code sometimes uh, ruins that. Looks fine, looks fine, looks fine. A bit of OCD over here. All right. Dependency graph, okay, and dependency graph, okay, and we changed the build because we added the util. Util, util. All right, so let's go ahead and commit it. So uh, what do we have? Mm, CD, Tugless Funnel, um, GL, we have, um, by the way, I did like a small refactoring. I, I usually do like when I when I don't record for, for a while, you know, the dependencies change and stuff. All right, so we are uh, at the video 15 and it's part uh, 13. Okay, so this is gonna be um, video 15, uh, part 13. And I think, I was recording for like one and a half hours, so maybe, maybe I have actually splitted this video into two. All right, uh, but I guess you you already know this by now. Uh, I don't yet. All right, this is by the way the the article, and the link is going to be down in the description. And these are the commits. Let's refresh, and here we are, video fifteen, part thirteen. Uh, we added the parse. This is like all the changes with the IDs, 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 IDs. Okay, uh, what is this? Okay, I accidentally committed this, but you know, whatever. Um, um, those IDs don't matter anyway, because like if you're playing around with this locally, your IDs are going to be different anyway. Um, mm -hmm. That's fine. This was added by Scala FMT. Um, 
Uh, just a bunch of UIDs. And uh, yeah, nice. Now uh, we're not done uh, with the series. Uh, we still have a lot of rough edges related to error handling. Um, and uh, we also need a video about, um, about testing. And um, then we're gonna be done with the series. So there should be, I think maximum of three videos. However, some of them might get uh, very long like this one and I might uh, end up splitting them into two. In any case, I see you next time. As of right now, as always, it's been Vlad, devinsidey.com. Don't forget to like this video. If you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you learned something today, consider supporting me on Patreon or on GitHub sponsors, whatever you prefer. And also watch my videos weeks and sometimes even months before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.